Okay, so okay, so basically we stopped uh, here. And I was talking about the histogram. Uh, we wanted actually to use histogram. What uh, for? We want to use it to detect actually the location or at least the starting point of the lens or the lens markers uh, on the scene. So let's say we have three curves, like one, two, three. We wanted to estimate uh, along the horizontal axis where is the starting point of these curves and where they of course go to so basically because what i want to do at the end i want to estimate the coefficient the polynomial coefficient of the first curve here second and third uh, now it is optimal to have, don't have third to have only two as i said because our path is between two and uh, then in this case it's not a good example uh, but anyway, as I said, if we know the position of the vehicle, then we can filter out one of them that are basically um, maybe we can know from the location of the vehicle and the location of the curves that one of them, for example, is outside of the region or of our interest. Uh, so what is the idea? What is histogram doing? Uh, which is here, it's called histogram, but it's not really histogram. It's more like projection of these pixel values uh, on the horizontal. By projection, I mean we do scan, or basically we, we look from the first to the end location. Then we sum up the pixel values along the, the basically here, the vertical axis. So along the height here. Now, if I have uh, straight lines, that basically we have perfect lens and with a straight line like this. So for example, a straight line here that represents the left lane, and straight line here that represents the right lane. And this basically, of course, which means that the pixels here, they have values along that line here, and these pixels, they have values along that line. Now, if I sum uh, the pixel values along the height and project them along the horizontal axis, you would see like here, for example, you have zero, 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 then you get get pick because of the sum of all the pixel values. Then you get zeros, then pick again, then zeros. Now what we want to do is locate these pick uh, locations and this would be considered as starting, for example, position of uh, my lens or basically my lane edges or lane markers or the lane curves, okay? If we get something like this, it's not very good because if I do this sum now, uh, or I do this projection, I would here have kind of it's not it would not you would not really see a peak. So let's actually do that just to see what I'm uh, talking about. So this is our histogram uh, function that we will use. So first what it does is basically convert the image to gray because I don't really care about the color here. Then it sums the pixel values along the height, along the x, uh, the axis zero. Then it returns, of course, here one dimensional, I would say, vector. Uh, and this one dimensional vector, of course, would have peaks at different location. But in this case, as I said, we don't really have a peak. You see that we have kind of values here, then we have some zeros in this location. And then again, zeros and basically uh, the values that represent the right, right one. Uh, now, you, you can use this information. You can use, for example, that whenever you have zero, that means we ended one of the lanes or the lines of lanes. I was confused with line of lanes, as I said, and then here, Maybe when we start again, this is then the end of the second curve. And then here, the second and third, you don't really have much differences. And you don't have a really gap. Uh, so it's uh, here it's hard to use. But for example, I can take, um, yeah. So for example, I can consider that this point belongs to the first lane. And this point belongs to the right lane. Which makes sense actually because a car, when this image was taken, it actually was driving in the middle. 
So actually, this is the left and the right land, and this is nothing to consider. So if we consider the first land and it's the right land, then this point would represent the left, and this point would represent the right. And then I can use this point, and I can actually do a polynomial fitting uh, to this point, and polynomial fitting to the right point, then I can get the coefficient of this uh, basically two curves. And of course, then my target point for the pure pursuit controller or for the Stanley controller would be, as I said, the middle point there. Anyway, this is not the optimal way to follow because these lines are distorted. What I mean by distorted? Now, in reality, uh, this is uh, a good time to introduce to you uh, this page, uh, this GitHub uh, repository or page where the code actually that you will use is coming from. And uh, here it's called advanced line finding. And what I, what I mean by distorted, lanes in real, uh, basically on our uh, real uh, environment, they are parallel, parallel, right? So they are not, uh, they don't intersect like we see here. And of course, this intersect or, or basically that they don't look parallel anymore is because, of course, the camera distortion or because the effect of the camera lens. Now, there is something called perspective transformation uh, here where you can. Uh, use some of the also libraries of uh, or uh, functions of OpenCV to do this perspective transformation. And the goal of this perspective transformation is to bring back uh, the lens to be parallel again. And if we can basically solve this torsion here, I would get then these three lens here that in this case would be parallel. And in this case, if I do the histogram, I will get really the correct uh, this positions because I will get actually uh, the high peaks uh, that I can locate. And also I can do now the polynomial fitting on these lines, which would be easier than the, this scene that you see here. Now, this perspective transformation needs some reference points to transform it back or to calibrate the model first and then transform it back. Now, what are these points? For example, if I want to, here we have an image uh, that is taken from certain angle with your camera. And here lines, they don't look uh, as they are in reality and you want to bring it back to that form. And in order to do that, you need to have this reference point, which means this one, two, three, four, that are point on the real uh, scene or on the scene itself. And my target points would be, for example, the four corners of the scene. Then it will transform it to that, okay? Now we need to find this reference point for our use case here. And they are called the source and the destination. Uh, basically uh, point. Now we have here something called the offset, which is the offset indicates below is a trick to bring left and right lanes or lines, sorry, closer to each other in order to not lose line curvature information. So here it's not really important to have precise, precise uh, perspective transformation, but actually to make this lens as parallel as possible, okay? And this is what he's saying here, and also to bring them closer to each other as, possible, as much as uh, possible. So uh, this is what he is doing here, actually. We need, to, we need to find four points on this source. So we need to find four points uh, of this uh, image. Then uh, the target is more about the offset that you see here. And here we have the Y size and the Y size here, which is basically uh, the width of that. Uh, no, actually, yeah, let's see how it's solving here. Image shape zero. No, no, it's in the height that I expected. And okay, so he's defining the source images like this, and line destination offset is 200. Uh, 
I don't know these points from where. I think this also need to be experiment because it is not actually detecting this source point. Um, I'll check what to do. Maybe this also could be trick. We use the hexagon points, right? Because if we also take the hexagon, hexagon uh, uh, as a reference point, then we can use them as reference and then we bring uh, them back to the destination. So let me check uh, this now. Or I can copy this piece of code. I already started and forked uh, this repository. I don't know why it's quite slow now. So, yeah, of course, that doesn't look like uh, there are some. I think brackets there. So we have it with the name. Okay, this actually okay. So this point, of course, we need to change, and uh, so now I said I want to take probably the hexagon. Reference points. So it's because I'm, as I said, I'm using VM. So this is why it sometimes gets really slow. So I'll take clauses actually, I don't need it now. Okay, so actually we need it because I want to get uh, the hexagon points. I want to print this hexagon point. Then we can, oh, sorry, then we can use it. And that depends on your scene. Actually, we don't need it, so, so. Because I already uh, cross defined.
Okay, I need to restart it, I think. Uh, oh, let's check. Yeah, so our width and height is 460, 360. Okay. Just keep it here now, the placeholder. And then our hexagon location, or oh, actually coordinates. on these yeah. so basically my source would be in this case that I'll call the format later to list mm. list is out of range. So we have one, two, three, four, right? I think we need to transpose it here. Yeah. No. Okay, now it works. So this would be my destination. So this is what I said. We need to make this break this distortion back to or we do need to do the transformation. And then I can apply the histogram. This is what the histogram that I was talking about, which basically would project that on the horizontal by just summing up the pixels along the height. And then you would see this peaks. And this peaks would be, for example, this line and this line. Then I do polynomial curves of these two lines. Uh, now, the part of the code where there is uh, perspective transformation I don't see it here but we can Let's see what you will get out of this. So, nope. So we have the source destination, then here it's our image matrix and I want to show the result what so we have source destination yeah, I think we didn't make this list, maybe. No, it's still the same problem.
Okay, let's see what shape this has here. for two and point two and then Okay, because there we have four points and there we have five points. It will make sense. So let me remove so we need to see which point we are using. Actually it's not like we need just uh random so this is the source number three zero mm -hmm. plus line offset So we have so this is basically uh, the first two corners of the image, so the top two corners, and this should be the the two bottom corners. Okay, and So this is not the first corner in our case, but I want to use probably the first corner of, or well, actually the second vertex, or corner of the hexagon, okay? And this would be that. Then the second one would be here. So this is the middle point that I probably don't want don't want it basically i want this now let's keep that as zero and right So this would be the first point, uh, which is the second on the hexagon, and this is the fourth on the hexagon. And uh, then this is fine. And here I want to take the, in this case, the zero height. We are still getting zero anyway. Let's checking. No, we didn't put yet the the point. Now for two, for two. Oh, 
Okay, that <laughs> made it worse. So obviously our transformation is not correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's check his main .py. This also we have to change because I don't know if it is the solution. Well, I don't think it is the solution. Two one zero one two one. I think it is the same as this, but just in case. So what I want to do next, uh, now really <laughs> think through. So I want to bring this line, right? So the end of that line to here, and the end of that line to here, and not to, not the hexagon because hexagon was it wasn't actually completely stupid, but uh, we need to look at it in different ways. So the exactly, hexagon in our case starts here, then go there, then from there it starts to go there, right? So what I'm thinking about now is that, okay, we take this point from uh, the hexagon. Uh, we can take two points that represent the hexagon actually center, or at least the head of the hexagon there. Then my destination would be one here and one there. And then hopefully it works. Let's see that. Uh, Okay, so which means not this one what I want. I want to have actually two of these. So this would be my first point. This is exactly the same, but we will move it to another place. And yeah, then, sorry, then here, which one should I take? Maybe they would take the corners that they are. So we take these two, uh, then, yeah, then that, then that. So in this case, actually, Here, I don't want to change it. The same. Now, these points I want to bring it up and to the left. So that means. This is correct, so first either left or right. So this place one on the right and one to the left. Uh, but it's now here. Let's do it this way. I think we need to bring it up as well. Let's use the same threshold. Hmm. Four and reach. Let's use it smaller. 
and both of them need to be brought up See which program we have here. It is my first point, it is my second point, and we have to have here. Interesting. Um, If I use zero, that's really interesting because this means that destination and source they are actually the same, right? This was zero height. And this one I said. Oh, okay. This one wrong. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I increase. This and it changes, still not change at all. We can go more, I think. Ah, it's about now, let's try an image. Okay. So what did we do here? We said that this uh, my source points. This one my target points. That's doing nothing. Um, let maybe bring this a little bit to the right. So this is Work. Source terms. Let's see his wrap function. 
I mean, it's not really detecting points, you just here also. So plus line offset, minus line offset, minus line offset, minus plus line offset, and here is zero, zero, not right. Uh, let's see if there's anything. One thing different, I say is not yet using the interpolation linear. I doubt it would add anything. What is the shape actually of that? Because it seems that they are. Or let's see if there's a value is or not. No. Okay. So the result is empty. Our image is not. Get respect to transformation, then here we have the D size, which is the image shape. Okay, then that's also. So he's taking first the the third point, right? Zero, one, two, three. So the last point zero plus line offset. Um, Okay, so this for the width. Zero, zero. There's something wrong about our source points. That's clear. And I think they have to be maybe sequential. So this is five hundred four hundred fifty two. 
So the width in this case uh, at 500 and in this case at 600. So the, these two points are quite also in the middle, I would say. So this is not wrong. It's like similar to our case. And uh, they have specific height. Right? Then, so they have the same height, different width. Um, in our case, they have same height, same width, actually. Maybe there's an issue. Then, here we have a point which is basically a little bit more on the right. So, these are the two corners. Okay, which means uh, maybe if I take, uh, let me take again the this point instead of zero height and so on. So this will be my first point, and this will be my second point. So they have the actually the no. Uh, the other height itself, so this would be my height. Is my width as a whole? So I will use your like it does. So we have here about 460 as a width, so I take here 300 maybe, and there I take 100. First point, then here maybe this I take it a little bit to the left. This one. A little bit to the right. Let's see what would that do. Mm -hmm. Better, right? Mm. I don't know if I go with her right. That is not good. So I think this is fine. This is getting better. Okay, so just playing around 
but I want to, it's actually this one is not bad, but we don't want to. Split them more, I actually have them. So as a location, this is not bad, but I want to bring this a bit to the right and this a bit to the <coughs> to the left because now we have three lanes actually and let's actually plot the histogram and see which one is doing well. Oh, we have the function here already. So plt dot plot. I mean, this one is clear, right? Because this is the first line. Uh, here we have the issue between this one and this one. They are too close to each other. So let's keep that here. And see what we need to do. Maybe if I bring a bit off this point, so maybe that helps, or vice versa. So then maybe we bring it down instead of up. But now they are putting it together, which is not good. Not bad. Okay, so I will just stop this now and I'll figure out myself the best parameters. Uh, but also you can try yourself, but in the next video I'll start from the best parameters. Thank you.